If you ever have tried to make a basket, uh, then you start to have a great deal more respect for how difficult it is. I look at basketry as not only an art form, uh, but um, uh, representing a culture. They were master mathematicians to keep that design element in their head and the stitch count. It's all those stories, it's all those traditions of early days. Through those stories and through those experiences, my grandchildren who might never have met them in person feel as if they know them, and in fact, they do. Through those stories and through those memories, my grandkids are able to, to interact with their ancestors. When people have something tangible to look at, to hold, it's going to bring respect to our ancestors. A lot of the things that baskets were used for are replaced by new goods like dishes and pots and pans and boxes and bags. You know, all of these kind of uh, household things, you know, those all used to be baskets. Most of them have to do with native relationships with the natural environment and with their belief in the spiritual world. So oftentimes they were generally abstract. The basket has a prayer that wraps around it and it protects the plants that I gathered inside. And it says in Shmuich, ki no no hil alapai, ki no no hil alishao, kakina hi hol atwai, Tanikilik he held cuckoo. And what that means is, Grandfather in the sky, thank you for the sun, thank you for the moon. Please watch over the people. Having to lay out designs on that object and have them work with that shape, you hold that design in your in your mind. So you're not writing it down, you're not graphing it out. You just have to be able in your mind to see the finished product, and then break it down into all the different steps along the way, which is actually a lot of math and geometry. There is so much human ingenuity and aesthetic expression. It is art, but it is also function. When I weave, I have so many points of contact, right? My hands are always in it. We're holding hands. My body's pushing. My knees are pushing. I'm forming this basket. So it's very much like nature. You have to be out there with many points of contact, reforming, always, it's like a dance partner. Baskets, when you look at them across time, you can almost have a conversation with the maker. You can see them making decisions, deciding on particular materials or a particular technique. Looking at a basket is being able to, in some ways, sort of talk across time and admire um, masters at work. The willows are sunk into the ground, and the tule is thatched over top. Here's the black junkus right here. So I'm going to soak it right there, and then I'm going to get uh, the junkus, the long junkus. So I'm going to split that too. And then I use like I don't know 20, 30 stick. I just split it and then soak it in water. You have to boil water, then add the dye inside, then dip the sisal inside, leave it for about 10, 20 minutes, then remove the sisal from the hot water, then dry it on the line, and it is ready for weaving. Types of materials, sweet grass and sisal. The women harvest grass from the gardens, then cut sisal. They strip sisal into small pieces. And now I need to remove the bark. Nighttime is a time when you don't gather. Nighttime is when the spirits of the plants, they just rest. And so you let them have that time. And so we don't gather at night. But the minute the sun comes up, I'm out there. <laughs> Ha-ha-ha. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
our story has always been. What do we need to do to make sure that we are always here? And how can we make plans for always being here? And it might have just been very few. It could have been, you know, as little as like one to two people that are holding on to one aspect of it. But that was what we knew we had to do to make sure that it was there for future generations. That's such an inherent part of being an indigenous person too. It's like you take the tools of colonization, right? You take all these things that you have to work with now because this isn't the way it has been and it isn't the way it used to be. This isn't what our ancestors had to deal with. But you take it and then you use those things that colonization has given you and then bring it back to our traditions. Meaning we grow our own basketry material. We, you know, advocate for ourselves through policy decisions. We write books. We become academics. We perpetuate our traditional ecological knowledge. Um, so I think that's a very powerful thing.